So, I've, I've, I've kind of had a little bit of an issue with TV series out at the moment. It feels like everything out at the moment is a little bit crap. Um, I'm having to struggle to get through a lot of the things just because I've got nothing to watch and if I want to wind down and kind of disconnect from everyday life, I just kind of have to watch whatever's available just because. But I finally finished part one of season four of Stranger Things and I have to say this is legitimately one of the best things out on TV at the moment. And season four might be better than season one and even season two of Stranger Things because I feel like season three kind of fill up a bit of a cliff but i feel like season four this at least part one is legitimately what i've been hoping for in terms of tv series it doesn't take itself too seriously it tells interesting stories from very different perspectives loads of different perspectives actually which i think is something you have to give the guys credit who do maybe the showrunners or the writers in general stranger things they how they're able to tell so many interesting um detailed without being too heady and crazy stories of all these individual characters but then still have them all kind of merge without it coming across corny is really really commendable extremely commend especially when you imagine that there are what maybe four or five leads that we probably have to focus on but even the auxiliary kind of supporting characters they all kind of contribute to the overall narrative of the story and they do a really good they do a really good job of weaving it all together and then, of course, the plot itself is just brilliant. The development of the characters is fucking brilliant, especially the one person who I really like, um, one of my favourite, the kind of an the antagonist of the entire thing. Again, I'm going to spoil it, so if you don't want to hear it, then please skip ahead. But the antagonist of it, the kind of the the blonde dude who's basically um, number one, who's uh, the lab assistant in the facility where Eleven kind of gets um, trained into being this kind of psychic assassin, his character development throughout the entirety of that part one is incredible to see towards the end where he just turns into this kind of sociopathic psycho devil demon satan thing whatever he creature he turns into but it happens over a period of time it's great to watch in real time it's so amazing to see really 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 is but the funny thing is is that actually in terms of characters and the actors Millie Bobby Brown's character, Eleven, she might actually be, she might legitimately be the worst actor in the entire thing, which is strange to think so, because you'd imagine she's basically one of the main leads in it, but she legitimately might be one of the worst actors in there. Apart from when she cries and gets emotional, she's very flat in terms of an actor. I, I don't really enjoy her performances at all. I feel like whenever she's on screen, you notice how bad she is and it kind of takes you out of the trance of watching Stranger Things, which is a bit disappointing. Um, so that's a bit of an error. But again, I think because the other performers are so strong, you notice when someone's really bad. In the same way, you notice how that sort of like overly um, stereotypical black girl fly kind of archetype they put on the little sister of lucas is a little bit cringe and kind of make you want to bath in your mouth but again the actor that plays that role out of this world the only thing that i don't like that hasn't been explained so far is what's going on between these two guys again the characters names don't ask me but if you're watching it you would know what i'm talking about um the character who plays basically 11's boyfriend and then the character who plays 11 11's boyfriend's kind of best friend what's going on between them what what is he trying to say without saying is this guy gay and basically has a hots for him and doesn't want to tell him? Why would he want to tell him if he knows a relationship with Eleven? Doesn't it create some weird, unnecessarily odd um, love triangle between a, a couple of teenagers? I just don't understand the point of this. Like, why Why does this add anything to the story that he has a hots for him? I don't really understand it. It's really, really strange. But anyway, in general incredible series to watch i really am i'm enjoying it i can't wait for part two i really really can't to see how this entire thing ends it's been an absolute breath of fresh air to watch and um may long continue because there's too much i feel like agenda driven tv at the moment there's too many things kind of soaked in politics and you know ideology and whatnot without which essentially unfortunately takes away from the story because there's one thing if you imbue politics and ideology into your tv series and the story is actually good but if it's just going to be laden with politics but the story's crap what's the point do you know what I mean what's the point so definitely check out stranger things if you haven't already because i legitimately think it's one of the best things like hands down one of the best things on tv at the moment and i'm really 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 like and i'm saying this honestly i'm enjoying every last minute of it and i can't wait to watch part two when it eventually does drop